easy to listen to, very easy to listen to. <laughs> I found it really, really inspirational. I thought it was absolutely great. I mean, oh my one disappointment, I haven't got a chance to come back with lots of questions because it absolutely stimulated loads of ideas that I wanted to talk about. Um, but then there's going to be opportunities to do that later on. What she was saying was interesting. She delivered it with humour, which was very good. Um, um, but also, I just think, because I think she touched a lot of nerves, she touched a lot of people, and it wasn't the sort of talk that you could listen and not be thinking about. Moral purpose can't be something that is pursued because we're trying to comply with legalities or tick the politically correct box. It's more about having a clear position, as I have on a whole range of things, about the morality of what we're doing and what the purpose of education should be. So what is the context that we're trying to navigate as governors and as school leaders? Well, turbulence for one. Um, one of the things that I said to um, a symposium in Leeds last year, I was trying to draw on examples that I knew of around the world um, where people were looking at their education systems and having those big conversations about what's the purpose of education now in our society. And um, I thought I would go back to the homeland of my parents and to Jamaica um, for my example. And one of the things that I shared with um, the uh, group in Leeds is that in Jamaica, for the last 10 years, we have been following a 14-year transformation program. So they're kind of coming towards the latter end of it now. And Jamaica has decided that one of the things that it needed to do, and I, I suppose the thing that triggered this was 50 years of independence. And 50 years of independence from, from Britain. So, you know, kind of rethinking who are we as Jamaicans? What is Jamaica PLC? And of course it coincides with us being very popular for all kinds of things. Not least Usain Bolt and et cetera, et cetera. And so Jamaicans were saying, look, what is Jamaica PLC now at this stage in the 21st century? And how do we want to position ourselves on the world stage? It's great that we've got world-class athletes. It's great that we've got Bob Marley. But could Jamaica be known for something other than that? But of course, part of that conversation is internal in terms of the nation. And so they focused on education. And they said that the way that we can reimagine and reposition um, Jamaica is to rethink what the purpose of education in Jamaica is. And they said that beyond raising the literacy and numeracy rates of children, which is a given in terms of the purpose of education anywhere, the purpose of education must be around nation building. But then what they did was to get their politicians of all colours to sit round the table and agree that there would be no policy changes for 14 years around education, exactly, exactly, to enable them to begin this transformation agenda. So I humbly, but naively, as it turned out, offered this to the Leeds Symposium, and there were a number of politicians on the panel, and they all sort of huffed away, oh, well, you know, we couldn't possibly have that in England. We couldn't have, possibly have politicians agreeing on something. How would people know who to vote for? Too much turbulence. Imagine if we had a period of security for a moment may not be 14 years, that may be too ambitious, but let's just say seven. Where we didn't have policy changes, where we actually pursued a policy through to the end, where we actually had the research to show 
whether that intervention actually worked or not, where we had the time to develop the leaders to, you, 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 can, you can see where I'm going, can't you? I think the other context for school leadership amongst the many that I have listed is that we are currently a nation ill at ease with itself. And my example for this is the narrow focus on Britishness within globalised classrooms. At a time when we at, are at our most diverse, we are at our most ill at ease in terms of defining who we are. And where we may wish to have an inclusive education system, a more diverse education system, with different people sitting around the table, we are in a position where there is no real consensus about what we mean by some of the very fundamental questions on the table, not least, what is it to be British? Do you know, the thing that stuck with me were two, was two things. One was the servant leadership, because I think that uh, many governors, they're unpaid. Why do they do it? Why, what is it? Is it just about because they want to be important? or what is it? No, it's about servant leadership. And she encapsulate, encapsulated that really, really well. I have to say, I found her completely inspirational. I don't think there's many talks you go to that really... Effect, you know, create change in how you think about things. And um, I was just saying to a colleague, it made me think about my own education when I was that child in a council house not being able to afford the uniform. Um, and I was a, you know, a pupil premium child who did really well. And now I'm not in that situation, just thinking about those families in the schools I gov you know, I'm a governor at, because I'm a governor at two schools, a special school and a primary school. And, th and just reflecting on those families and the, the, the different challenges, very simple challenges to overcome, such as providing uniform, actually, and just digging down into that a bit more. So many of our problems today are caused because people go through an education system which does not educe a sense of who we are, and in some cases reduces a sense of who we are and therefore what we can contribute. So for me, education is about empowerment. And I think that the way that we get there is for us to value ourselves as not only the custodians, as governors of an education system, but as people who have lived rich lives and can bring that autobiography to bear in the way that we look at the education of other people's children. As a head teacher, when I sat at my desk in a largely white working class school in Wolverhampton, where at the beginning of the school year, there were some families where it was guaranteed that not all of the children would turn up to school on time at the beginning of September. And the talk in the staff room was, these parents, they can't be asked. And I'd look at the school role and say, well, that particular family has three children of secondary school age. And I remember when my mother only had one child of secondary school age, and I passed the 11 plus and went to the posh grammar school and therefore needed a posh uniform. And while she was really pleased that I'd passed the 11 plus, she was really concerned as to how she was going to pay for not only the school uniform, but the hockey kit and the, and the this and the that and the other. And these people have got three kids coming into secondary school or in secondary school they're in secondary school and having to... And I remember, as a head, sitting behind my desk, parents coming in, many of them single fathers raising their families, by the way, very proud people who were saying, look, I just can't afford. I can't afford the kit, and therefore I haven't sent the kids into school. And, yes, we know that you've got kits in the, in the, in the PTA that you know, kids can have, but I don't want them to have the second-hand kit. And I remember my mother not wanting me to do the same. But I also remember the blazer that she bought me in first year, year seven, that lasted me till... Um... <laughs> I'm not the only one, am I? 
We bring our upbringing and our socialization to the way we view the world. I remembered her picking the, 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 the sleeve out, ironing out the crease, and me squeezing into that blazer for nearly five years. Yes? Upbringing and socialization gives birth to our values and our beliefs. And therefore, our motivation for what we do, and therefore, what we actually do through our behaviors. And what most of us are seeking, and I'm sure most of us as governors are seeking, is some kind of balance in terms of the schools that we support. We're looking for those places, aren't we, where there's some kind of synergy between who we are, what we value, and what the school values, and how it goes about business. Am I right in saying that? As a head, this was, a difficult, this was difficult territory to navigate with my staff. Uh, I do remember a conversation with my head of science who um, told me in no uncertain terms um, that he was not a social worker but that he was a head of science. And all I was trying to suggest to the gentleman was that he might approach the way that he was a head of science slightly differently in order to engage some of our children who weren't particularly interested in science. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I thought I had some fantastic ideas. But for him, it fell into, I'm not a social worker. So mm -hmm. we continued for not very much longer, I have to say, <laughs> um, before he moved on. Um, I thought it was excellent, excellent speech. Um, a lot of challenging things for us as governors. Um, I've been a chair of governors for 10 years in Brighton and Hove, and in a school that's predominantly seen as a, a, a white school, so obviously me as chair, it's quite interesting. And I just thought Rosemary just let a lot, left a lot of things for us to go away and think about that I know, because I'm quite involved with the governors at the local authority level as well. Um, a lot of things for us to go away and think about. Very, very challenging. I would encourage us to speak truths about systemic inequity. When we're looking at inequality within the system, there is lots to suggest that there is more in-school inequality than there is when we compare school to school. And that's about looking at which groups within your schools, even your good schools, who are not faring well, not reaching their potential. It is definitely about ensuring that we enable and support our heads and our senior leadership teams to balance external events with internal values. You know? Thankfully, I'm the, the chair of governors of a primary school, but if I was the chair of governors of a secondary school, following what came out in terms of league tables last week, I would be having a conversation with the head that says, keep calm and carry on. <laughs> Please don't be calling a governing body meeting for us to rewrite our curriculum for September. And it's that kind of wisdom and compassion, understanding that you know, their heads are on the line, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, you know what happens? If we do right by our communities, it doesn't matter what the league tables say about the school. The parents and the kids will support what the school is doing if we do right by them. Yes, there's a small proportion of parents who will be looking at the league tables, oh, you know, I can't send them to that school now, it's gone down in the league tables, but you know that the vast majority of your parents and your kids will support your school if you are doing right by them. Balancing external events, some of them big, some of them really big, with internal values. And you know, I like the next one. Pick the politics out of the policy direction. If I had more time, I'd tell you a few stories about that. <laughs> you know? Now, if you ask me on an individual level whether I am for academization as a structural solution to um, underachievement, I might actually say, no, I'm not. 
However, I can find a way to pick the politics out of the policy direction, which means that I could become an academy and my, my, the, the school that we are, uh, uh, that I'm uh, chair of governors of has just got its academy order, so we're moving towards that. But we will be an academy as we define academy. We will be working in partnership with our other schools. We will not be competing. Do, do you see what I mean? That's what I mean about picking the politics out of the policy direction, getting away from some of the headlines and getting underneath them a little bit and saying, no, it doesn't have to be that way. A whole load of rogue head teachers in Darlington taught me that. <laughs> Absolutely off the hook they were. And um, there's a smashing story behind that, Rose. That's another one. That's, that's for another time. But, you know, for us as governors, shoulder to shoulder accountability. Yes? That's different to, you know, I'm holding you to account because I'm the chair of governors. Actually, shoulder to shoulder, we stand shoulder to shoulder. We are all accountable, but let's actually do that in a way that takes people with us. And we need to develop some alternative narratives about what's possible. That's another thing that I do on a day. I do a whole day on teaching Billy and finding Ellie. Ellie was one of the best teachers I ever come across. She'd only been teaching for two years. She was like a whirlwind. My drama teacher. And I remember when I, when I first took over, I will be very quick, Rose, I know. She's so polite. She just stands there kind of giving me the look. <laughs> My mother used to give me that look, so I can feel it. But, you know, teaching, teaching Billy and finding Ellie. I won't even tell you about Billy, because I'll be here all day, but Ellie. Ellie was like a breath of fresh air, and I was in a school, when I took over the school as head, of, head um, teacher, they had a huge deficit. I mean, I won't even tell you the digits. It's frightening to <coughs> say. I didn't realize that until after I'd signed on the dotted line. <laughs> anyway, one of the things that the chair of governors at the time said to me is that we can't possibly afford to recruit any new staff. And they didn't have any drama in the school. And I thought, you know what? We need a drama teacher. And I remember saying to him one day, you know, we need a drama teacher. And he said, can you see these kids poncing around? That's not a very good Wolverhampton accent. Can you see these kids <laughs> pouncing around on a stage? What they need are skills for the workplace. Anyway, I appointed Ellie, and she was amazing. The best teacher I'd ever come across in my life. I made her head of teaching and learning. And she taught us how to teach the kids that we had, not the kids that we wish we had. <laughs> And that's where Billy came in, because Billy was symptomatic of the kind of kid that staff in our school just said couldn't be taught. Anyway, that's a, that's a lovely story. But we had to, as leaders, develop an alternative narrative around what is possible with the Billies of this world. All of this, of course, depends on our perspective in life. And I wish that that was a better focus picture, but when I tell you the background to it, you will understand why it is not. I was in my beloved Jamaica, staying with my brother in a place called Hanover. For those of you who know Jamaica, it's in the west of the island, so rural, but we also have sea. And um, I was doing a, a presentation, I was putting together a presentation for head teachers in Kingston, which is the capital. So I wanted the, 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 the presentation to look good. So I'm trying to download images from the internet that will encapsulate some of the big messages that I want to put across, like perspective. But of course, where we are in rural Jamaica, you can barely get a signal. So I'm walking around with my laptop trying to get you know, half a bar to download something. And in exasperation, I put my laptop down, and I look out of the window and saw that. And I took the image on my phone and transferred it to my laptop, and then it was in my presentation. But the, the story is that my brother, who was cooking dinner, walked past and looked at the laptop and said, wow, what a beautiful image. How did you manage to download that from the internet? And I said, bruv, look out your window. Sometimes we can't see for looking. 
And so much of what is possible depends on our own personal perspective. Thank you very, very much. Oh.